and this is a TV and computing craze is giving kids cancer. I mean, it's a sli it's slightly misleading because it's not the the screens that are giving the kids cancer; it's the sedentary lifestyle uh, that uh, that they lead to. When you read the story, immediately you think about wireless affecting children, but it's actually all about being lazy and sitting mm. on your backside watching the telly for far too long. Mm. It's a really interesting story. I had a conversation with a family over Christmas who said they'd limited their child to five hours on the computer. <laughs> Five, five hours, hours a day? I, yeah, five hours a day. And we walked out and thought, that's five hours a day. That's it, because it you says home, last they, year children spent an average of 5.9 hours a day in front of the TV, and I thought that seemed very high. I mean, it says screens of any sort. So this includes yeah. computer screens, mm -hmm. the TV screens. Yeah. This also includes your phone and anything like that. But it still seems an awful lot. It's a horrendous amount. The tr I mean, the trouble is we all spend more time in front of computers now because it's the way life goes. Yeah. And I think the problem actually lies in, probably in the parents' generation as well because the parents are spending more time and they don't realise, perhaps, that the children... Children are, it's too easy to dump mm. the children in front of the telly, isn't it? Mm. And, we are looking at this in quite a bad way. I mean, there's no doubt that if you are computers within schools and educational, and there's a lot of, there's of, a lot of great use that mm. comes out of them, mm. but mm. you just think of a child sat there. But it's also how fast something. it's happening, because a decade ago, 21, yeah. this is 10 years ago, 21% of kids had never been online, mm. and today the number is down to just 1%. And it's an incredible like... statistic, isn't it? I yeah. think about yeah. it, my generation, I'm 32 years old now, and I remember the first Christmas I got a games console, my granddad had been really upset because we sat in front of the computer screen for about six hours playing Sonic the Hedgehog. You look at it now with Call of Duty and kids sit there mm. for hours playing it, hours mm. and hours on end. Mm. I've got a three-year-old son and I think about it, we discuss it a lot, how much time can we let him play a computer game? Mm. I think it's important that he's a part of it because you could be ostracised in your class if you're not part of that you know, that, that gaming culture, but at the same time, it's a dangerous thing. Yeah. But the trouble is, they're not just playing it on the computer at home, are they? They're playing it on their phones, they're yeah. playing it all over the place. I mean, goodness knows not how many them. hours in Not total. just them, we all are. We we all we're are. all yeah. doing it. I didn't even have a television at home until I was about 14, so, I mean, how deprived was that? I remember when we got a microwave <laughs> and it scared the life out of me. Oh, I know. <laughs> you had to put it in a shed and I shut two doors. I was terrified of it. <laughs> well, I spoke to Juno de Campo earlier on, and he's got a son eight and a son ten, and he doesn't let them play the computer no. at all. At all, no, he doesn't. Which I think is quite impressive. So yeah. Can't be many parents mm. to do that. Here's yeah. a uh, here's a very serious and terribly sad story. We'll take this one out of the, the Guardian here, um, and um, this is the mother who uh, who beat her mm. uh, seven year old son to death for failing to learn the Quran by heart. Um, as uh, uh, she's been jailed for life, Sarah Edge uh, had to be helped sobbing from the dock after uh, being told that she would serve 17 years before being considered for uh, for parole. And this was. Uh, you, the, the, there is an expectation that there would be elements of the Quran in religious lessons that would be learned, but this was way over and above what was expected. To learn the whole thing. Well, apparently that would he would then become a Havis, which is somebody who memorises the Quran completely. And, and she hoped, the mother hoped, that such status would would, would improve, that such a ability would improve the status of the family. But what is the most extraordinary thing is she was apparently regarded as a very good mm. and loving mother until this obsession began to take over and. The way she treated her son is almost too horrendous to, to reveal. Well, this was Mr Justice Wynne Williams who mm. said uh, he concluded that her son was subjected to prolonged cruelty and the violence was not confined to the mm. day of his death. So, obviously, it's something that's going to be... And you, you do wonder why somebody didn't pick up that he was being... That's what I think, too. Um, I think maltreated, let's, you know. Certainly, as Holly just said, there was an ongoing investigation into what happened prior to, uh, prior to his death. Um, record numbers of parents are gaining criminal records for allowing their children to play truant figures have revealed. 10,000 a year are being convicted over their sons and daughters' failure to turn up to lessons. Because they're all at home playing on, playing their, on their computer games. Oh, seriously, I wonder how much of a part that plays in it. 